Good afternoon, all. I were to take the research methodology. Sorry, my voice will be faint because I was having some challenges. It helps, but I have to make up this lecture. Also, I'm going to apologize for not showing my screens for some time, but I believe by next week I'll be able to show the screens so that I'll share the screens with you. You'll be able to get it back and I'll type everything. Then I'll probably send it to you by mail or by the time you have your revision. So that's the thing we have to do. Today's own is my voice is going to be very faint because of the A health. So please apologize for that. We're going to talk about research design because we are concentrating on what you are going to do so that you do a good research work. So research design, when you talk about research, which is an organized inquiry, that contains two types. That's made up of two types, the quantitative and the qualitative. The qualitative aspect of it is descriptive, while the quantitative aspect of it is numerical, mathematical. You can do all those things there. But the qualitative one is, then when you finish with this, you think what the research I'm carrying, is it going to be qualitative or quantitative? When you look at it like that, you now move forward. Then I said earlier that in chapter three, that's where most of the examiner focus and know whether you know what you are doing. Because they will, yeah, you will tell them what you did. Research design has three types. The survey, the experimental, the exposed factor. These three types are the research designs. Then in that research design, you describe the one you are using. If you are using survey method, is it descriptive? Is it explanatory? Is it longitudinal? So when you are talking about survey method, are you going to carry out a research that is descriptive? Are you going to carry a research that is explanatory or explanatory? Or the trend or cohorts or panel survey? So all this is, is what you now think about when you are talking about survey and you have to describe it in research design whatever type of research you want to do survey research design then you will now tell us that you are going to do a descriptive one then if you are talking about experimental you're not going to talk whether it's experiment or semi-experiment before and after in most cases this one is being carried out by two that are doing agriculture where you will normally have an experiment or a lab lab. So where you now do before and after to know the effect of those relationships. Then the next one is ex post factor. Whenever you are doing secondary sales, secondary data, you need to use ex post factor because the data is already existing. It's worth sort of going there and collect it as a secondary data, then analyze it. There you now have what you are going to do in your data. So when you have all these things, you describe your research design, the type of research design you want to do. Then your examiner will understand you. You put it down. When you talk about the source of data, you are either talking about primary or secondary. Then when you are talking about secondary, that is a two factor. That's what you are going to use to get your results. When you get your data, get your data from there, you go to the office, get annual report, you see what they have done for you, you pick your data. You go to another company, pick data. That is a small part. The way you, this data you are picking, you are going to analyze them. That will not take us what we call variable. What is variable? Variable is what you are going, something you are going to measure. An object you want to measure, either it's numeric or non numeric. So, when you're talking about variable, you're not talking about dependent variable and independent variable. Because this is where most of the students get confused. They mix it up. 
is the dependent variable, whereas they are trying to focus on dependent variable. You are just talking about dependent variable focusing on independent variable. Independent variable is one that is going to change on itself. Why is dependent variable? Depends on independent variable. As far as that one is concerned, it affects the other one. Let me give you an example. Employee attitude. Effect of employee attitude on performance. When somebody is not happy, you think he's going to perform very well. He's not going to perform any magic. Because he's not happy, it affects his performance. He cannot meet his target. If he's a salesman, if he's, there are no job satisfaction, the vector is breaking down every time. He will not involve in the team planning. He will not carry it along in the target. He just go and sell. There will be no commitment. The employee will not be happy to do the work. Do you think if you give him a target, he will achieve it? He cannot achieve the target. He will try to do the, he will struggle, trying to do something that will make him to achieve the target, but he's not achieving the target. That's what we are talking about. When you talk about employee, effect of employee attitude, you look at the dependent variable and the independent variable. So the performance will change. The output of a salesman will change if his attitude is good. Do you see that the performance will keep on changing? He performed very well today, tomorrow he performs another one. And that performance is based on independent variable. Because he's happy, he was able to put up his commitment. You have to be loyal. He has to do everything to achieve his target because he knows he's going to get a bonus. That is what you're talking about, the performance of as dependent variable. Attitude, which is involves just attraction, job involvement, job engagement, job commitment. These are the things that make up the, makes the person happy. When he's happy, is able to carry out his job very well. That is an example one. Then when you go to when you go to another set, like in production, when you go to production, if a staff is not happy working in that production, the volume is expected to produce production. He is not happy, he's not involved, he didn't know about the target. He's actually to work. He comes late. He goes early. These things affect his performance. He will be given a volume to deliver. He cannot produce that volume. The manager is unable to do it because he was not happy with the job. Because one is not communicated to him the target or time. He is not happy with the job. He didn't get satisfaction from the job. Therefore, his commitment is low. He's not loyal to the job. So these are the things that affect when you talk about dependent variable and independent variable, you're looking at two things, the relationship. That somebody that when you set up an objective, you'll be looking at the dependent variable, focusing it on the independent variable. Because that independent variable is the performance. And that the performance will now start having about the target. Performance is a result, the outcome. Of doing well. So what you are going to see there is the production capacity or the form he has produced or the sales he has revenue he has achieved. These are the things you think about when you talk about dependent variable and independent variable. That helps you to understand it clearly so that when you are doing this you make sure that you get yourself clear that your dependent variable is clear and that's the objective. That dependent variable are the objective you have set to check the independent variable. Let me give you another example. If you get an office, want to know the office performance, the company is performing well or not, what are the things they are going to check? They are going to check whether the cost of sales 
the cost of sales does it have any effect on return in investment on any per share or on return on asset? Because when you talk about performance, if the economy is performing well, there will be return on asset, there will be return on investment, there will be any per share. Because any per share means that the dividend will not be given to the customer. And if they are not performing well, how do you think you will pay the dividend to them? So when you talk about performance, we look at what are the things, what are the just to measure performance? What are the things that make up performance? The performance of a given company is based on the dividend they pay out to their shareholders. Return on investment, they are what they draw back into the business. The sustainability of that company, that performance. So when you are looking at return on investment, any per share, that performance. But then they are not paying dividends. The company is not performing. And when you are looking at it, you look at the cost of sales, you look at market share, you look at revenue generated. Because if they generate the enough revenue, it will have an impact on them. They want to move on. Earlier, I had said that I will show you the screen because of some certain things. I wasn't able to show the screen. I apologize for that. This is the third week. I apologize for the mistakes. So by next week, I'll be able to share the screen and equally send all the things I sent to you. So I apologize for that. I'm not feeling fine, but I need to deliver this lecture. That's why I said we need to. So this is dependent variable and independent variable. Then another thing the, the examiner will be looking at is that reliable? The instrument you are using is it reliable? How do you check whether your instrument is reliable? You first of all carry out a panel survey, a miniature survey to know whether that thing is reliable. Then you use either coefficient of correlation or chromat alpha, you use to test it. When you test those things, you get a value. If it is 7.07.7, then that is 70%. It's very close to it. If you get 0.5, it's very low. If you get more than 7, it's very high. So when you carry out a survey, a mean interest survey, you dispute your questionnaire. When you dispute your questionnaire, then you are able to look at it. When you collect the questionnaire back, the response is you carry out an arithmetic work to test whether those things is reliable. If you have a value 0.7, R0.7, R squared equal to 0.7, then you now know that that instrument is reliable. If you have 0.75, it's reliable. 0.8 is reliable. That is 80%. But when you have 85, 90, it's astrageous. You watch it. Watch your statements. Watch your reports. Check back the questionnaire you're giving them, whether they actually feel it very well, whether they responded as they're supposed to respond, or they just tick anything they find. That's what the examiner will look at. When you finish that, you move to what is method of data analysis. These things are very important that when you get it right, you are on the right track of doing your project because we are not going to start telling you, yes, yes, professor, we just look at what you write and read it and tell you, do this correction. Yes, professor, I have no time to tell you all these things we are talking about. That's why you are, when you are learning these things, you are able to put your work in order. So when you uh, then you look at the total data analysis, you look at it in such a way that what method do you want to analyze the data? What statistics are you going to use? Are you going to use care, chi square? Are you going to use t? Are you going to use normal distribution? Are you going to use ANOVA, analysis of variance? Are you going to use regression? 
There are so many statistics you can use. When you use these things, you tell the examiner that in the method of data analysis, you are going to use these things to analyze it. You are going to use me. Me is equally possible. You can use me, but you have to tell the examiner that in the method of data analysis, which is in chapter three, 3.9, that we are going to use ANOVA, analysis of variance. I'm going to use T. You can combine them. But the actual thing you are doing is to ensure that you are telling the examiner what you are going to use. The only time that you are going to use analysis of variance, in coming to the work, it's called that you are using chi square. It's called that you are using T distribution. It's called that you are using normal distribution. No. That the just of telling the examiner, I'm using uh, ANOVA. Yeah, if you're looking at F distribution, how we are going to use the relationship to compare what you are doing. I'm going to use regression. If you're looking at your regression analysis to see that the result is from regression analysis. I'm going to use normal distribution. The examiner will be looking for to see that you are doing something as regards to a regression analysis. Normal distribution, if you're looking at your normal distribution, me, if you say you're going to use me, he's looking at your me. You're going to use variance and standard deviation. He's looking at those things when you go to chapter four. Not when you say you're using this in chapter three. When you go to chapter four, you start using a different thing. That is not correct. That's why we're telling you how to apply it in such a way that you have to use the correct thing and deliver your things very well. Then, when you are using me, based on the questionnaire you are given, I have mentioned that when you are using questionnaire, you don't use yes and no or open-ended questionnaire. When you use open-ended, that means you are trying to tell the person to add something. And by the time they put their opinion on that, it may be difficult to analyze. So what you normally do, you put a boxes they will tick. And you don't use yes and no, because it's very elementary. When you want to use questionnaire method, you use favorable, most favorable, unfavorable, not favorable at all, or neutral. You see now it has five options. Either it's most favorable, unfavorable, not favorable, not favorable at all, or neutral. And that's what we call linkage scale measure. We are using linkage. That is the standard for any undergraduate or master's to do his research work. When you use that, it means that you understand this topic very well. And when you are using that questionnaire, linkage style, linkage scale, you are doing the right thing because you are asking the person, this question I asked you, you are responding most favorable, not favorable, not favorable at all, or neutral. Then you now assign values to it. When it is most favorable, you assign five. Favorable, you assign four. Neutral, you assign three. Not favorable, you assign two. Not favorable at all, you assign one. When you are using me, you put all these things by the time you start analyzing it, you gather all those ones that say they are favorable on that particular objective. You put them down, analyze them. From that objective number one, when you analyze, if the mean is at a given point, you either reject or accept the null hypothesis. Because the null hypothesis will say it has no significance, or the mean is not equal to zero. Not significant. Or mean not equals to zero. Mu is not equals to zero. When you say that, you are looking at when you calculate at a certain
sorry for that interruption. Uh, network has to uh, disrupt our program for a while. So as I was talking, we talk about method of data analysis. The examiner will be looking at what method are you going to use to analyze the data? That is very important because the examiner will look at it when you want to defend your thesis or your research work. The examiner will be looking at what you have already said in chapter three that you are going to use to analyze the data. You are using ANOVA. Ensure you stick to it. If you are using T distribution, ensure you that we are doing with that. You are actually doing the right thing. So that's the right thing.
sorry, sorry for the interruption. Network is not a friend. Yeah, it's challenging us. The network is not our friend. We are interrupting what we are seeing from time to time. So we all the same. As I was saying, you have to stick to what statistic you want to use to analyze your data. When you analyze the data with a particular one, or a combination of ANOVA and T, nobody will follow. About that, but you have to mention it in your method of data, which you are going to use to describe what you are going to do in the four. Chapter four is method of analysis itself. So when you are doing that presentation and analysis, then you will have to mention in chapter three what you need to do in chapter four. So when you get to chapter four, you will not be ambiguous. You not be looking for R. Uh, you said you are going to use normal. Of what you have already said in chapter that you are going to use, and in hypothesis, if it's below. You will not accept. You have to state it there. You state the condition why the mean is to be used. So when you state it in 3.9, that if the mean of a given object as we are dealing is 3, we now accept your hypothesis. Or we reject your hypothesis. So these are the things you are going to put down in chapter you to chapter four, so that when you are analyzing them, you are able to get it right. When you analyze the first one, you report it and give interpretation and conclusion on that right. When you finish all of them, then you do a general conclusion. That is how to analyze your data. That is how to tell the method of analyzing your data. We cannot do anything that we follow the process. And that's why this research is an organized inquiry, systematic process. You don't jump with it. When you are doing a research, don't jump the line. Follow it sequentially. You will get it right. That is the best way to handle research. Research work is very interesting if you are able to do the right thing. If you do the right thing, you'll be able to defend your work without any fear of them. You will be talking brilliantly on the day of your defense because when they ask you the question, you'll be able to answer the question because you did the research by yourself. You collected the data and you analyze the data by yourself. Though some professionals can help you to analyze, but because you collected the data and you follow through, how the data is analyzed with this professional, you are able to get the right answer. You are able to know where there is hitch. You are able to discover it and able to answer the questions whenever they ask you, what did you do? And you are able to tell everybody what you did in this research methodology. It's a good thing that when you are doing research, always try not at all to read other people's work so that you look at it and they have an idea. Your knowledge is based on what you get from other people. You can say that you don't need them because you are not an island of them. It's the knowledge that you now gather to build up your own. So when you are looking at the data you collected, you analyze it, read other people's work, uh, that gives you chapter two. That's where you are now to see that those people they either rejected or accepted, but your own, you rejected or accepted as the case may be. But because we read people's book, you have a clear view of what the topic is talking about. 
you have a clear view of what people are saying about you. Though some people will have a different opinion, but I'm advising you that wherever you are doing your research, endeavor to look at other people's work so that you are able to get to the right things in the right order. So that if you are trying to conclude your answers, your answer or your result will be based on what others said and what you are now getting. Not assuming. At this point, you don't assume anything. You do the result and present the result as you see it. Because the management research in office work will be used for management decision. Market research is a research. And if you don't do it well, you will mislead them. So whatever you are doing as regards to research, ensure you do the right thing so that you are able to get the right result. That is what we achieve in doing a right thing. After that, you analyze the data, analyze it objective by objective. Objective one, objective two, objective three, objective four. Minimum of four objectives is allowed. When you analyze them, then you conclude in all of them, in each of them, and finally conclude in all of them. And get your findings and present them together in the report. <clears throat> when you do that, you have completed. Then from now on, we are going to delve into other things as regards to research methodology. We are now going to involve ourselves in some calculations, which we may do online as you see it. You see it with Excel. We do it by next week, we are able to see what we are doing in Excel. By the time we analyze it, you see what we do, we get it right. So without delay, we may end this class today without showing the screen. But next week, we are going to show the screen on the topic we are going to handle. And we will only review some of the screens of what you have done. You will now observe the screen in such a way that you know it will give you a practical view of actually what we are talking theoretically. So by next week, I, I promise you, I'm going to show the screen and you're going to see it fair view of it and you're able to comprehend it. So we can end this class by now. I have to manage to do the class because I was at first the class night. But I don't have to disappoint you. At least we have to do something. I believe by next week we'll be able to carry out a good work. My voice is very faint. But I apologize for that. Thank you. And have a wonderful day.